another day in your sanctuary, another day to pray with you. Pray for you, pray for others. Lord, we just thank you because you are one. Father, we want to praise you today because you are one of you praise. For those who are not here, Father, we pray that you give them the same God and Those who are here, Lord, we thank you for their heart to be here. We thank you for the preparation of the lesson and the path that you hope to deliver the lesson. Father, we pray that we are receivers and doers of your word. Father, we pray that anyone in the sound of the voices that we have in our breath, when we walk out of here, we witness that would not fall on deaf ears. But whether it does or not, Father, it is our job to be a witness for you. Because we are so thankful for you. We are just humbled by your presence here and today. So we thank you and praise you. In your precious name we pray. Amen. 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 So glad to see everyone out this morning. Uh, such a wonderful Sunday morning. Today we're now lesson 12, still in our stomach quarter, unit 3, eternal hope. Lesson 12, August the 18th, 2024, our devotional reading will come from Psalms 37, 27 through 40. Background scripture will come from Titus 1, 1 through 13, 2, 11 through 15. Our print passage will come from Titus 1, 1 through 3, 2, 11 through 15. Our key verse that we will stand and read will come from Titus 2, 11 through 13. Our lesson topic for today is Celia's for good deeds. The lesson aim tells us as a result of experiencing this lesson, we the participants should be able to discuss strategies for exercising self-control and godliness in difficult situations. Neutral hope in Christian living while awaiting Jesus' return. Grow spiritually mature as Christ's disciples and witness. This lesson matters because some people enjoy living reckless without regard for consequences. How does a thoughtful consideration of the future inform our actions in the present? Paul instructed Titus to lead others towards lives that were self-controlled, upright, and godly with a view towards the blessed hope of Christ's return. The lesson in focus tells us, have you ever wondered why God created us? Well, there are reasons for why he didn't make to why he didn't make to he, why he didn't have to make humanity the crowning glory of his creation. When we were when we contempt contemplate God's complete sovereignty and holiness, it is mind-boggling that he condescended to crown humanity with glory and honor and choose to call the created his friends. Since God needs nothing, we were not created because he needed us. Instead, God's word tells us that he created humanity for his glory and pleasure. Consequently, we glorify and bring joy to God by acknowledging who he is and loving, worshiping, and fellowshipping with him. Our responsibility and privilege to worship God fulfill an additional purpose for his creating us, doing good works, adoration and service, good works are subjective and objectified to genuine worship. Adoring God, adoring God should produce the desire and the motivation to serve him through good works. Paul writing to the Christians in Ephesus states that believers are God's masterpieces created to accomplish the good works that he planned and ordained before time began. The good works that God planned encompass the total, total, totality of the believer's lifestyle, the responsibility for preparing and equipping believers to produce these good works lies with those whom God has chosen to lead his people. Training God's people for the service is a tremendous task that should not be taken lightly or neglected. To this end, Paul encouraged and provided guidelines to his sons in the faith, Timothy and Titus, whom he assigned to continue pastoral responsibilities in Ephesus and Crete. Paul instructed Titus, ministering to the Cretan Christians, to continue to teach, develop, and prepare these new converts to pursue doing good works. There is still a critical need for more labor who are well prepared and committed to God's assigned work. Therefore, spiritual leaders must be given priority to develop and equip more leaders for effective ministry. The biblical in context. This epistle written by Paul and his name for it is his sister, Titus. Titus and one and two, first, Titus and the first and second Timothy are classified as the pastoral epistles. These epistles were written to help Paul's sons in the faith, Timothy and Titus, become transformative leaders. Transformative leaders are continually growing in God's grace and their ability to lead, to lead, to lead believers towards spiritual maturity. Paul wrote this letter about AD 62 to 64 between his 
birth and sex role in pregnancy from Corinth or Nicopolis, the largest city, TV home, Greece, Swift, and Coast. It is believed that Titus met Paul and was led to Christianity before or during Paul's first missionary journey. Later, Titus ministered with Paul on the island of Crete. Paul left him there to continue ministering, strengthening the work of God, and appointed other elders. This epistle does not focus on explaining or defending doctrine. Instead, it emphasizes that leaders must keep sound doctrine to the saints to prepare them for the ministry. Church leaders are responsible for establishing God's standards, modeling them, and equipping believers for ministry. Accordingly, Paul reminded Titus of his instructions for appointing qualified leaders to accomplish these tasks. Now let's turn to our devotional reading, which comes from Psalm 37, 27 through 40. Depart from evil and do good and dwell forevermore. For the Lord loveth judgment, forsaken not his saints. They are preserved forever, but the seed of the wicked shall be cut off. The righteous shall inherit the land and dwell it there, therein forever. The mouth of the righteous speaketh wisdom, and his tongue talketh of judgment. The law of his God is in his heart. None of his steps shall slack. The wicked watches the righteous and seeketh to slay him. The Lord will not leave him in his hand, nor condemn him when he is judged. Wait on the Lord and keep his way, and he shall exhort thee and inherit the land. When the wicked are cut off, thou shalt see it. I have seen the wicked in great power and spread it himself like a green bay leaf. Yea, he passes away, and lo, he was not. Yea, I saw him, but he he could be he could not be found. Mark the perfect man, and behold the upright, for the end of that man is peace. But the but the transgression shall be destroyed together. The end of the wicked shall be cut off. But the salvation of the righteous is of the Lord. He is their strength in the time of trouble. And the Lord shall keep them and deliver them. He shall deliver them from the wicked and save them because they trust in him. Amen. Thank you for reading that. Now let's stand and read our key verses. <coughs> the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to all men teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lusts, we shall live soberly, righteously, and godly in the present world, looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Titus 2, 11, 13. Once again, our lesson topic is billions for good deeds and good Now Let's know our teacher exam this. Amen. After everyone getting out a little earlier this morning. We are glad that ones are here and hope the others are on the way. We have a great lesson before us this morning. I pray that everyone have a little diligent to our lesson today. Zealous for good deeds. And that word zealous, the writer used, it's a showing a great energy or enthusiasm in pursuit of a cause or an object. Great energy. Zillion for good deed. And uh, as Nick had uh, read in our introduction, I see about Paul writing to Titus for setting some things in line for building the ministry and church in the island of Crete. Uh, our first outline this morning is appoint godly leaders. We're going to ask someone if you read those scripture, Titus 1 through 3. And since I was listening so long, we want you to read this down to where I assume oversight of these churches. Then I'll come back. Paul, a servant of God and an apostle of Jesus Christ, according to the faith of God's elect. And in acknowledging of the truth which is after godliness. 
is a skin hope of eternal life, which God that cannot lie promised before the world began, but hath in due times manifested <coughs> his word through preaching, which is committed unto me according to the commandment of our God, of God our Savior. Paul wrote this epistle to guide Titus <coughs> in working with new churches springing up on the island of Crete. He starts off by identifying himself as God's servant and an apostle of Jesus Christ. These two titles reveal Paul's dual priorities regarding his calling, reaching the people for salvation, justification, and teaching them to live godly, sanctification, with truth, the saving message of Christ's death and resurrection. The primary focus of Paul's ministry was God's eternal plan to reclaim a people for himself. Though it is not a part of the scripture passage for this lesson, the following information is good for insight. After acknowledging Titus as a legitimate son in the faith, Paul moves directly to Titus's specific commission. Because of the disorganized state of the Cretan church, Paul instructed Titus to establish correct teaching and appoint elders in every Cretan town um, as he had previously taught. These new churches need strong, needed strong spiritual leadership. Those chosen to lead, those chosen were to lead by teaching sound doctrine, help believers mature spiritually, and equip them to live godly lives in op amid opposition. Therefore, Paul describes some of the qualifications <coughs> that they were to possess. Although there is a similarity to the list given to Timothy, Titus's list considers um, sorry, Titus's list considers the nature and needs of the Cretan Christian. Paul listed the traits that qualify leaders. Um, sorry, Paul listed the traits that qualify leaders needed in order to assume oversight of these churches. Amen. Thank you, Lon. A point. Godly leaders. Now, today, just God did not change what I'm saying because I noticed that here lately, and some of y'all might know that deacons, there's two offices, pastor and deacon mm -hmm. in the church. And they have gotten to the point where some of them just said, well, we don't have deacons. That's right. And I, I question a lot of times, how can that happen? And, and I conclude that the only way that that can happen, that you got people, deacons, in position that don't know their position. Amen. I was just told the other week there, I said, oh, I don't think that church has any deacons in the world. The pastor just said he didn't need any. And I called, I said, now that, that's some weak deacon. Because even without pastors, the officers got to step up and the church must go forward. Okay? So therefore, when, when he was talking here, in the outline is good, appoint godly leaders. <clears throat> Not just name only and position and title only, but godly. Mm -hmm. Now, here, Paul began his letter by emphasizing the nature of his ministry as an apostle of Jesus Christ. Uh, Paul introduced in his lesson uh, himself, that was the, the style of writing for those days during those times where he introduced who he was, all those titles knew Paul, and he began to talk about the things and he shifts. When you read the, the, the chapter, he shifts. He said, now, Paul reads for writing this letter <clears throat> to Titus stem from his desire for Titus to help him with building up the new church on the Isle of Crete. The start of the letter, see Paul identify himself as God's servant and apostle Jesus Christ. In these roles, he looked to reach out to people for salvation, justification, and teach them how to live godly with the truth. Now, uh, due to the brevity of Paul's previous visit to Crete, it was necessary that Titus, and the lesson said, set in order this unfinished situation. So when you read uh, uh, 1 Titus 1 and 3, then Paul shifts.
talking about qualifications uh, of the officers or the leaders in the church. Why was this so important? When he just introduced himself, then he shifted. Because it's a fact, it's a known fact that don't care whatever you start to do. If you start out wrong, guess what? You end up wrong. That's building a house, building a church, sewing a dress, or whatever it is. If you start out wrong, you end up wrong. So Paul tells Titus to qualify, tell the, of the qualification of these uh, appointed leaders in the church. Because the church has got to be built up. They've got to be godly, yeah. God-fearing, yes. and, and he talks about their qualification as a family mm -hmm. and all of these things because you can't just get somebody and put them in place. That's right. You know, that's what that's why the, uh, a lot of times it, 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 it's the church is sitting crooked. I use that term, it's sitting crooked because it's not lining up with the chief cornerstone, mm -hmm. which is Jesus Christ. It's that Jesus Christ got to be that chief cornerstone. And I can't understand why would anybody want a, 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 a position, a role in the church and, and just want it because of time. It should be something ingrained on the inside of that person that they're going to work without title. They're going to work and do everything they can for the glory of God. A lot of times they don't have a title I don't want to do. And that's wrong. Now, in verse 1, he said, Now, Paul, a servant of God and apostle Jesus Christ, according to the faith of what gods. Now, when they say God's elect, when you see God with the apostrophe, that shows what? Ownership. So they belong, these elect belongs to God. They are not of themselves. They belong to God. <clears throat> and acknowledging of the truth which is after godliness. The truth. Acknowledging of the truth. The truth here, God's word. 2 Timothy 2, 25, he put it this way. In meekness, okay, instructing those that oppose themselves, if, if God preadventure will give them repentance of the knowledge of the truth. Okay, now, and 1 Timothy 6 and 3. It tells that if any man teach otherwise and consent not to the wholesome word over, uh, word over the word of our Lord Jesus Christ and the doctrine which is according to godliness. Why did I read those to you? Because, I'm going to use it again, a lot of times why we're not unsound because People are teaching their their theology right. or their opinion. Mm -hmm. Everything that we have to do got to be lined. No, it got to be God's word. Amen. I ain't gonna say in line with God's word. It got to be lined with God's word. Because I can come up with something. Oh, I'm gonna put this in line with God's word. No, it got to be God's word. Amen. Okay, yeah. that's it. God's word is gonna stand on His own. Okay, He said now acknowledging. Except in knowing the truth. Then he said in verse 2, in hope of eternal life, which God that cannot lie promised before the world began. Mm -hmm. Acknowledging the truth. We're here today acknowledging the truth, but we're all, I believe, I know I am, in hope okay. of eternal life. Okay? Yeah. When I think about in hope of eternal life, and we all have said goodbye to our loved ones, right? And, and it gives us hope that we're going to see the one that died for our sin and hope of that great day of resurrection where we will live our life eternal. Okay? So, that word of God bring us, fill us with hope of a better day, a better time, in hope of eternal life with God that cannot lie promised from the, before the world began. First Timothy 1 and 9, put it this way. To who has saved us and called us with a holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his 
own purpose and grace which were given us in Christ Jesus before the world began. Before the world began. We were born in sin, shaped in iniquity. The Bible said we were walking in darkness. God sent his son as a way, a light for us. So, that promise is there. How do we get the change from, from uh, to walk in that hope? Well, acknowledging the truth. The truth is God's word. Accepting the truth, God's word. Walking in what we believe, in that faith that we have. Because I'm going to tell y'all what Sam do. I made up my mind a long time ago that I'm going to trust God's word. Because I'm not going to play it short. I'm going to trust it. Because I know I got an appointment one day. I got an expiration date. And I don't want to wait till I feel like I'm on closing some expiration date. Because I'm going to trust it all the days of my life, every breath that I breathe, trust God's word. Okay? Because when we leave here, I want to live in hope of eternal life. And that means that, that we, we won't die no more. Verse 3 said, But as hath in due time manifest his word through preaching, which is committed unto me according to to the commandment of God our Savior. Tony, when I, 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 get, I, I didn't call Tony that because I, I didn't want to. When, when I was read that, <laughs> I'm talking to everybody, I just got to talk to you. When, when, I, when I read that, I've been, I'm, I'm not pointing at Tony, but I just want to share with everybody. When, when, when I read that, that through preaching, people are confused yeah. what preaching really is. All right. Okay? Some of the best sermon I heard, the, pre the, the preacher never got to hooping. Yeah. Understand? Yeah. Some of them said, oh, he ain't do nothing. They want to hoop. <laughs> Some of the best sermon I heard never got even got to hooping. But that message will well deliver. So for one thing, we got to know what preaching is. Okay? And what it says, it is a sermon expound on the truth of God's word. It never said anything about hooping. They be doing, I haven't seen something done good until they start the nine and nine. They lose me. Okay? So now, he has in due time manifest his word through Preaching, not hooping, preaching, expounding God's word, which is committed unto me according to the commandment of God our Savior. Now, Paul said to commit it to him according to the commandment. What Paul is, was writing, I can imagine Paul reflect back onto his rest, the master road experience, That's right. where God called him. And he was struck with blindness for a few, uh, three days that God acknowledged him as a chosen vessel. And once Paul got his sight back and he realized that God had, Jesus, that God had spoke to him, he was zealous for God's word. He began to work yeah. preaching and teaching God's word because now he had a change of how it was. Okay? You find that in, in the book of Acts 9 and 15. We didn't talk about that. Okay, he said, according to the commandment of God our Savior. Commandment here means that God commanded him to preach his word. Okay? Now, when he done that, he, he, he introduced that, and he, Paul provided a list of qualifications for Titus to identify and appoint these leaders. Okay, what he was trying to do, he was trying to get help Titus set uh, 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 things in order to build a church. You can't, you can't, you can't build it on crooked. 
You, you can't build it on, 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 on unbelieving. You, you can't believe it with somebody sitting at an altar and don't know Christ. Right. You can't build it with somebody sitting there and not have a relationship with it. Because I think for so long we've been going along just to get along. And that, and that messed things up. Okay? Now he said, what this? This is what he said. He did for Timothy also in Ephesus. The two lists are similar covering the same essential quality. Signifying Paul wrote in the present tense indicated that those chosen must already possess these characters. Mm -hmm. Traits. Okay? Then he said first, be blameless, unreprovable, be the husband of one wife, one wife, no chick on the side, <laughs> maintain discipline in their household as positive spiritual influences whose children cannot be charged with disobedience and rebellion. Paul explained the rational for elder being blamed verse, they are stewards or manager of the thing of God. Hence, when a church leader reputation is damaged, so is God. And what does it mean? Let me tell y'all what. I said it all the time. If me or any officer, pastor, any officer, and, 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 and sometimes they'll pull y'all members in too. If pastor, me, or any officer, something happened outside here and it's a public offense, you ever notice how they first associate with where you go to church? <laughs> well, Sam Nelson, ain't he a deacon over there in Mount Rose? They're going to leave. Right. Not only do I come on an attack, but the body that I serve right. come on attack. Indeed. And the question is, how does Mount Rose let that go on? Okay. I'm going to tell y'all something. I, I experienced that. Not that I've done anything, but people came out and was questioned when some things happened with me. You know, he over there in Mount Rose. Yes, I am still the same person I've always been in Mount Rose. Same person. I'm not. I'm not. I'm responsible how people treat me. I'm responsible how I treat people. That's right. Okay. Now, if I mistreat somebody, I'm gonna go to that person. But I'm hoping, praying that I don't. But that because something happened in my name, come up and how I've been mistreated. It's not on me. Okay. So we have to understand that. Okay. Let's go with our second outline. We'll get a little deeper here. For the grace of God that brings salvation mm -hmm. has appeared to all men, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lust, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world, looking for that blessed hope and the glory appearing of the great God and our Savior mm -hmm. Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify unto himself of the pure and purify unto himself of the pure Prepare God and fathers. Now, she read churches to be effective in kingdom work. The 
church to be effective in kingdom work, the responsibility just don't lie on the leadership. All right. We're going to go back to what I said earlier. If the leadership is crooked, you're going to have crooked followers. Don't make sense? So we got to stand firm, but not only is it our responsibility, we are responsible for our followers, and our follower has a responsibility to question us. And, and I'm, tell me, I don't have something to do. They, there's something going on in Mount Road, they're going to give me a call. Or they gonna want? I want. I need to talk to you about something. And, and then when it, then it's something that I I gotta talk to. I talk to the pastor, and we had to talk with whatever the situation. We got to address whatever situation is. Because if you're not, you could be like this here, straight. And then after a while, you let stuff go to going to kind of go to doing this, or go to going and doing this. That's right. Okay. Now. Paul dealt with leadership in the church. Chapter 1. Instructing Titus to appoint qualified leaders to assume the responsibility of leading, teaching sound doctrine, helping believers mature spiritually, and equipping them to live godly lives. After advising Titus on what to teach the various group in the congregation, Paul affirmed that the result of salvation is not renounced sin and evil desire, but live godly lives and produce works of righteousness. The force enabling believers to live godly lives is the same power that produced salvation, God's grace. As grace is allowed to work in the Christian heart, the result is more Christ-like character that denied ungodly and the lust of the flesh. Left to ourselves, we would succumb to sin repeatedly, but because of God's grace, we cannot renounce it and live self-controlled, upright, and godly as we await the blessed hope of Christ's return. Without that, we will be overtaken. Okay? Now, Titus 2, 11 through 15 said, For the grace of God that bringeth salvation had appeared to all men. What are you talking about, Paul right? John 1 and 9 is that that was the true light, Jesus Christ, which lighted every man that cometh into the world. Okay? Verse 12 it said, Teach us, teaching us, that denying ungodly and worldly lust, we should live soberly, righteous, and godly in this present world. Now, when you hear that word soberly, it's not talking, we, you know, when somebody thinks about somebody sober, they think about drunk. Yeah. But there, you can be messed up in your thinking. That's right. Okay? So when it talks about teach us that deny ungodliness, word of love, we should live soberly. In other words, it, when you drink, it distort your thinking. It distort your thinking, sometimes your vision, and it should distort your walk. You know? <laughs> <laughs> And you're driving. And you're driving. That's right. And you're driving. That's right. So when 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 you when you live soberly, meaning you're thinking clearly, yeah. you seeing clearly, you walking clearly, you walking straight. So when it talks about being live soberly, righteous and godly in this present world, okay. In Luke one and seventy five. It said, and holiness and righteousness before him all the days 
all our lives. Okay? In holiness, in righteousness, before him all the days of our lives. Now, I want to share some scripture with y'all. Okay? Now, this outline talks about preparing godly fathers. Paul told Titus that what he's supposed to do is to teach and preach sound doctrine. Right? Okay. When we preach and teach sound doctrine, when we hear it, we should take it to our heart. It is what will lead and guide us. Okay, now, Paul gave the instruction to Titus also, we should follow. Okay, in Titus 1 and 9, I'm going to give you uh, holding fast the faithful word as has been taught. That's what hold fast the faithful word we've been taught. That we may be able by sound doctrine both to exhort and to convince the gainsayers. Now, in Titus 2, 1, 2, and 3, to but speak those things which become sound doctrine. Two, that the aged men, the aged men, be sober, grave, temperate, sound in faith, charity, and patience. Sound doctrine will give us that. Okay? Y'all agree? Sound doctrine will give us that. That the aged men be sober, grave, temperate. I mean, we can control ourselves. Sound in faith, charity, and patience. All right. Three, the aged women. Okay? The aged women. Likewise, that they be in behavior as becoming holiness. <clears throat> not false accuser, not given to much wine, teachers of good things. And when I read that, I remember coming up where we had those mothers of the church. And when, when the young lady would come in with the dress a little bit too high, they wouldn't embarrass them in the crowd. But they'll pull them to the side. Talk to them about it. Okay? And I wonder sometimes what, what we lost that at. Well, <laughs> y'all remember that? I remember. Because those, those old mothers, they, they, they would make sure that they would teach the, the young women how to carry themselves. You in the Lord's house. This is the way you conduct yourself. This is the way you carry yourself. And they would do that. He said, what? The aged women, the old women, likewise that they be in behavior as becoming holiness, not false accusers, not given to much wine, teachers of good things. Now, let me tell you, it ain't just about wearing your dress down to your ankles. It ain't just about wearing your dress down to the end. Or when you dress up the outside, you have to dress up the inside. Amen. And when you dress up the inside, it'll teach you how to dress up the outside. Amen. 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 And this is important because we, we said preparing godly followers. Okay? And then verse 13 says, looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearance of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Looking for that appearance. Because when he talks about Christ appearing, he's coming back looking for a church. Yes, sir. Without what? Spot or ring. He's not talking about that. He's not talking about that. These things and stuff here. If he was talking about that, we could qualify. 
He's talking about us being built on sound doctrine. And let me tell you what, it, it's easy to do. It's easy to do. And I, I wonder sometimes why is it so hard when we just teach sound doctrine where people cannot just follow sound doctrine. When the scripture says, Spurs, we must deny ourselves, pick up the cross, and follow me. I think perhaps the biggest problem is people don't want to deny themselves. And they will tell you in the church, that's just how I am. That tell me they ain't going to deny, deny themselves. But you know what? We can't call out God's word to fit how they are. We got to stay with sound doctrine. Okay? And, and, and Paul is telling Titus there because if you're going to build up the church, you got to build it up with godly leaders, teaching sound doctrine, preaching those things that are sound doctrine, and then also build up followers, godly followers. And then this is what makes it so easy if we apply it God's way. When we apply it God's way, it becomes easy. But when we don't want to do it God's way, that's why you have all these hiccups in the church. Because a lot of people say, yeah, I, I, I'll be on there. Y'all know who I am. Mm. <laughs> You'd be surprised what you hear a lot of people say they know God, Jesus, and their Lord and Savior say. In verse 14, it's a who gave himself for us that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify unto himself a what peculiar people, zealous of good work, a peculiar people. <clears throat> now, we ought to be a peculiar people. There ought to be some difference. Because there ought to be some difference between us and people that don't know Christ. Right? It'd be some different. Hebrew 9 and 14 said, How much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without a spot of, uh, to God, purge our conscience from dead work to serve the living God? Jesus Christ has already paid the price. And we ought to be, after we have come into that relationship with him, the knowledge of his words, sound doctrine and truth, there ought to be something that tingling us. That we ought to learn to do better. Strive to do better. Because we ought to be, have a, 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 a spirit to draw. Okay? How we do it? What he said? If I be lifted up, I'll draw. How do we lift them up? Through our testimony. Through our lives. What, how God has transformed our lives. You know? And once we lift them up, people are like, wow. We want, we want to see people begin to come to Mount Rosie. We want to see people come to, to God. Okay? But we, we are the one that's going to transform by our life. Okay? Now, if it was me, and and I wasn't living a nickel worth of nothing, a penny worth of nothing, I couldn't be able to draw anybody. But I like it when I talk to people, and, and, and sometimes I, I thank God, I'm not boasting, but I've, there have been so many times where, especially when we were singing a lot, we had a big crowd of people, and and I would be emceeing the program else I would get up and say something. And more than one time, I can't even count the time, where somebody would see me at Walmart or something, and they'd come up to me and say, you know what you said the other night, it blessed me. I was needing to hear that. Yeah. I never knew. Yeah. But I spoke a word that helped a person at a time when they needed to hear a word. And when you hear that enough, it'll let you know people listen to you more than you think they do. Yeah. So we had to be careful. That when we speak, let it be sound doctrine. God word because people be listening and they will show you or tell you that they heard what you say. Okay? They will do it. 
Then he said we ought to be a peculiar people, zealous of good work. Oh, yeah. What that word zealous? Have an energy, a great energy for a call. And this call is the call of Christ. And finally, 15. So these things speak, exhort, and I like this word, rebuke with all authority. Now, that rebuke is that everything that happened in the church is not God. Right? What do we have to do? We had to rebuke it. A lot of times people don't like that. I know somebody one day I said, you ever had it been known anybody that don't like it? Don't like you to tell them nothing? They can be wrong, they just don't want you to tell them. I deal with people like that at work. They just they can be wrong on something. They, they, they'll tell you I know about that. That ain't right. You, you're not doing it right. They, 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 they know it. They just don't want you to tell them. So people have a problem being rebuked. But we had to do it. Now, it said, let no man despise thee. Rebuke with what? All authority. Let no man despise you. Now, I'm going to close with these two verses. First Titus 1, Titus 1 to 16. The profess that they know God. They profess that they know God. But in works they deny him, being admirable and disobedient unto every good work. They reprobate. Okay? Professing to know God, but our work denying that we don't know it. Then in Titus 2 and 8, sound speech that cannot be condemned. That he that is of the contrary. Part may be ashamed, having no evil thing to say of you. That was for me. That when we speak sound doctrine, now I'm not saying me, anybody, all of us, especially leadership. We we working on new leadership. Amen. So title was building the church at Creek. We're building in Mount Rose. So we can't just say, well, it was for then. It's for now. I told my brother the other day, we were standing out there talking, and I said, you know what? When, when our fathers and our mothers and all of them were going to church and they looked back, they saw a generation coming. Today, when we look back, can we see a generation coming? I see Tony, <laughs> Nate, Nate, and Betty. Yeah, that's right. But we gotta have a generation that's gonna be willing to work, yes. not just just not just come to church. Mm. A generation that's gonna be willing to work, because you know what? If you look back and don't see a generation <laughs> coming, you know what that means? He hit your knee, and and the church. He didn't just sit in the center of the community. He had a very important role in the center of the community. Amen. To teach sound doctrine. Mm -hmm. I was thinking the other week, I remember my, the older people saying why it was so important. We didn't never knew why it was a, a bell in the steeple of the church. Anybody knew why it was a bell in the steeple of the church? Mm -hmm. They said in those days when, when they didn't have telephones, but they would come in and ring that bell. Mm -hmm. And then when there was something happening in the community, they would come to the church. Mm -hmm. They could hear that bell tone, and when they come to the church, the, 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 the leadership let them know what had happened in the community. Mm -hmm. And they would ring it because it was a center of the community for good news, bad news, whatever needed to be known, that church radiated out. Mm -hmm. We just stopped ringing the bell. We took it down. Yes. But well, we still need to spread the good word. Amen. We still need to teach sound doctrine. Yes. Still need to teach the truth. 
and, and age men be sober, age women be an example, teach those things that are good. We stand and teach and preach whatever. Let it be sound doctrine. We let the pastor come and I find the word. We thank God for what a word again today. Yes, uh, uh, we all uh, want to uh, thank the church for coming in our word on the day. Uh, uh, Sam, we thank you for uh, letting God use you again today. <clears throat> and that's very important of sound doctrine. And I'm not going to hold because uh, we're going to have to stand on the count of God one day. And, and what he done is building up the household of faith where we are now. Not, not where we're going to be because God going to be in the midst of, of conforming us to where he wants us to be. But at the stage now, we got to be apt to hear what God is saying in these days and time. And I think we need more of that. And, and I think it will more powerful today in a long time, because people want to know the truth, mm -hmm. uh, not a miss, because we realize because of what we say and what we do, uh, you got to work it out. And I uh, know it ain't about working out, it comes from the inside. Mm -hmm. And Paul was telling uh, these young protégés to uh, be very careful uh, in your uh, description or training and tell the truth. Mm -hmm. And when you rebuke, don't give them your rebuke. Mm -hmm. Give them the word of God. You don't have to fix it up or nothing. Mm -hmm. And so that's why we, uh, especially our young leaders that's coming on the scene now, uh, we got to be very gentle with the truth that they will have some sound doctrine. It's not a lost generation. No, it, they ain't lost. They just left behind because we have uh, took on another view of our families now. Mm -hmm. But it ain't a loss. We're some hope when you alive. Mm -hmm. And I thank God. We're going to ask our superintendent to come. Amen. 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 Dear God, stir us. Third, and that's a fresh desire to draw, yes. to draw closer to you and accomplish the work that you created for us. We renew our commitment to serving you and living as godly witness before others. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Amen.